two men journey to the bars and restaurants of Scandinavia to find amazing beers, always with the same question. Hey, what's on tap? It's time to find out. Welcome to What's on Tap Podcast. We are here once again to review some beers. Hooray. We don't need to say that we're back we, because we never leave our listeners. Well, every week it's a brand new chance to expose ourselves to new people. Yeah, that is true. But for all of our regular listeners, we, I think we stay in their hearts. We do. And we also like to expose ourselves to them on a regular basis as Ooh, well. That's a special uh, channel <laughs> for subscribers only. That's where our OnlyFans comes into play. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah. So today we have two Ooh. cans from your fridge, one of which is a, a solid style from a solid local uh, Malmo brewery. Mm-hmm. And the second one is some kind of monstrosity that we will get back to <laughs> later uh, that I, I honestly am not looking forward to. I am not looking forward to anything more than this because I uh, just cannot imagine what pleasures are held within that glass. <laughs> no. So, but the no. first beer, in, in Malmö we have a brewery called Hylje Brewery. Mm-hmm. They've been at uh, Mikeller Beer Copenhagen Celebration. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've started to make a name of themselves internationally. And here they're one of the solid offerings. They make I would a say lot they've, of really, uh, they've really come on strong, really mostly focusing on traditional beer styles. Um, yeah, but also a lot of IPAs. Well, I consider IPA is a traditional beer style. They aren't doing like weird pastry styles and they aren't kind of doing a no, lot of true. funky styles or whatever. It's li- literally just very straight down the middle. IPAs, lagers, um, and then a few things, you know, outside of that. Um, but a lot of a lot of lager Pilsner releases uh, from them. And yes. then, yeah, and then what kind of got them on the market was this beer called Heliopan, uh, which was their IP, their double IPA, uh, which is really good. When you get it fresh, it's outstanding. Is it really a double IPA? I think it's like six point five. Oh, is it? Okay, is this a regular IPA? Yeah. Oh, it's 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 great. Whatever it is, it's really good. It's and it's not like a one of these. It's more in the traditional style of a of an IPA, and it's uh, when you get fresh cans of it, it's it's well worth. Getting. Yeah, and it's on the shelves at Swedish Monopoly Systembolaget. Yep. There's a, there's a pun in that name, Hyll Ipan. So they're Hyllia, that's a region mm-hmm. here outside of Malmö. But a Hylla, a shelf, is a shelf in Swedish. Mm-hmm. So this is the shelf IPA. Ah. Hyll Ipan, the shelf IPA. Gotcha. But also a connection to their, their roots. Yeah. Uh, and now they got it at the shelves at Systembolaget. So it really is a Hyll yeah. Ipa. Um, but yeah, I guess on the shelves you can find um, at least two or three different types of lagers, yep. one or two IPAs. They have a, uh, a bitter that you can usually find yeah, on the true. shelves, uh, a sour beer called Meadows. Uh, so, and this one. Oh, and this one, yes. It's called Devilish, and yep. it is a Belgian-style strong ale. Coming in at 8.5%. So that's a triple or a quad. I'm not really um, sure where that ABD traditional, point is. Traditional Belgian style ale with a complex f- flavor profile. Three, oh, two, it's four. double. I think, no, I think it's a... It's a double, right? I think it could be a quad. It's just Belgian it, style strong but, ale. But there is a, a category for Belgian strong ale that yeah. is not monastery. You're thinking about a uh, blonde, true, double, true, true. triple, quadruple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm thinking of. Because when I smell it, when I smell it, that's what I think of. It's like banana esters and Belgian yeast and funky kind of... A lot of Belgian yeast. And so it's, it's... It hits a lot of... Just like the smell of it just takes me to that Belgian, like... Yeah, Belgian quad kind of area. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it looks quite nice. It's quite murky. Mm-hmm. And uh, is opaque the right word? Yes. Not see-through. Yes, opaque. Yeah. Opaque. Yes. <laughs> I keep learning right. good words. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. I really like that one. It is a really good Belgian style strong ale. Yeah. If if I was given this blind, I am certain I would have guessed Belgian. Hundred. I mean, I think you would guess Belgian hundred percent of the time. I mean, this like this is probably the best non. 
made in Belgian, Belgian strong ale. I've, I've in had. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, it really, I mean, if you were to give me this and say Chimay and told me to pick between the two, I don't know that I could. No. <laughs> I would have a hard, that's what we should do. We, should, we haven't done a game of beers in a long time. We need to do a game of beers and then just bring out like. <laughs> game of beers. Nightmare level yeah. difficulty. It's like, yeah. Pick between. First of all, is three macro loggers. Yeah, it's between like a Carlsberg and Maria Stad and uh, Star Promise. Star Promise. Uh, Star. Yeah. Oh. Now I say, oh, I would, I would totally pick Star Promen in that lineup with, with I, blind tasting. I, I think, I think, honestly, I think you would get Carlsberg. Yeah, but I don't know that you would be able to tell between Maria Stad and Star Promen. No. <laughs> and then this and two other similar <laughs> yeah. Belgian strong ales. Yeah. Yikes! Oh, we should do that. Totally. Now I have a new goal. We have to do this soon. <laughs> <sighs> Having that said, yeah. I, I still, at one game of beers, managed to pick the specific uh, lambic producer from a blind-tasted uh, lambic. So uh, that was jaw-droppingly amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you love a Belgian-style uh, ale, I mean, this is—I mean, it pretty much is flawless in my opinion. It, they, yeah. they really nail it. They freaking got there. Um, and this is still a little cold, uh, but it drinks it's so well. The carbonation is really on point. Uh, the that strong Belgian yeast uh, aftertaste is really present. The alcohol is very well hidden. Yeah, Just yeah you don't get the eight point five percent ABV. It's there, but it doesn't like hit you over the head. Um, and maybe once this warms up, it'll be a little more present. But uh, for now, it's. It's pretty crazy good. I could drink this a lot. I could, yeah. I could buy cans and cans of this. <laughs> this entire... But you're saying something because I don't like Belgian strong ales uh, for the most part. <laughs> no, and I get that. For me, the style is very nostalgic. Mm -hmm. When I started drinking beers, uh, 2007, when I, when I started drinking them for real and tasting different ones, there were such a, a large number of lagers and boring IPAs and mm -hmm. brown ales and whatever available. So to get real flavor, you really needed to go American beer or uh, specialty styles like Russian Imperial Stout. Mm -hmm. There were a few of those, but Belgian strong ales, including the monastery beers like Double, Triple, mm -hmm. Quadruple, there were a lot of those. So you, on one hand, you have boring, bland, mass-produced beers, mm -hmm. and then you have access to these 20 Belgians strongest that actually taste something. So my the beginning of my beer journey is very heavily influenced by this style of beer mm -hmm. uh, because it actually tasted like something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this this has a, a very pronounced flavor, and I think it falls into that you either love it or you hate it, and there's no middle ground. Probably. Um, but I love this one. I think they've really uh, outdone themselves in this one, and I can't say that. They always hit the mark when they do these kind of beers. They've, no. they've had a few few misses in the past, but this one really um, outshines it. So I'm going to give this uh, actually quite high. I think I'm going to give it a 4.5. Oh, wow. I'm yeah. going to give it a solid 4. Like, Well, I think for me, I just enjoy this more. Yeah. And I think the reason I'm giving it so high, and maybe I don't think it's probably a 4.5 beer, but I think that they've just done such a great job of delivering to style that, um, like I said, if, if we had this with two other, you know, like Chimay and Orval or something, I don't know that I'd be able to really tell the difference uh, blindfolded. So that's why I, I'm kudos to the brewer. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. So the next one All is right. a cider. Oh, that doesn't sound so bad. Oof. But this is the Pom Pom Limited Edition Chocolate Ball Cider. Chocolate Ball. Chocolate Ball. Chocolate Ball. Which is a Swedish like dessert. It's not mm -hmm. a dessert. It's a it's a, a, a confectionery you have together with coffee. Right. So, so it, Swedish so it, fika. Yeah, so Swedish fika, which is afternoon coffee. And when you have afternoon coffee, you have things that are uh, just like small snacks. Usually one or two bites. Uh, the hookla bowl is a chocolate ball, which is, I think, it's oats and butter and sugar kind of bound together, and then you roll it in cocoa powder and coconut. Yeah. 
and then it uh, tastes like you're eating raw oatmeal with uh, a nice sugar crunch. Yes. They're not my favorites. That and, and the dem sugare, I don't uh, like those either. <laughs> uh, the, 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 they're made with arak. Uh, the the flavoring, yeah. but but the, the the coconut that you roll this in is very weak flavored coconut. Yes. It's like coconut ish, so it right, doesn't right. taste a lot yeah. like coconut. Unfortunately, like, so it's, it's shredded coconut, like is what it is. Shredded dried coconut. Yeah. yeah. So what this is is a pear cider. Oh, it's with, pear. All with right. flavoring of chocolate ball. Yeah. Uh, it's four point five percent. You found the producer, but. Okay, so here it says that it's created by Three Towns Brewers, yeah, yeah. which are mass produced. They make mass produced bullshit lagers. Yeah, yeah. The, the worst lagers. Uh, There's a beer called Two Towns, Three Towns. Three Towns. It's called Three Towns. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it, it's it, they make one of the worst mass produced lagers in Sweden. It's yeah. it's quite horrible. But yet they're fairly large. I, I assume they're owned by a larger organization, maybe. But uh, I'm not uh, sure. But they they are not. They're not known for quality, but uh, when I saw that someone had put out uh, a chocolate ball cider, I was like, oh, we're 100% reviewing this on the show. Martin doesn't have a say in this one. <laughs> it smells like chocolate and butter. It, it, it Honestly, it does oddly smell like a chocolate ball. I mean, yeah. there is, it is there. It is. I think, the smell is there, I but think that is not made, comforting somehow. Yeah. <laughs> I think they made the, the least pear flavored pear cider in the history of the world and they decided this tastes like nothing let's add artificial sweeteners and just go nuts uh oh and i must warn you this does contain sulfites oh no so. I'm, I'm going to die probably um well it's weird that they don't i mean it doesn't say that it contains any kind of chocolate or coconut just chocolate ball flavor 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 <laughs> which i don't know like they bought some kind of essence ball. I'm going to say, what, like, what is the essence of chocolate ball? I don't yeah. know. I mean, that, that, that's actually more disconcerting than anything. Let's else. try this and see if the show. Ends. Let's see if the show ends with my death here. Mm. Well, that is sweet. Here, the, the pear tries to fight the chocolate sugar butter yeah. mess, and those flavors are on opposite ends of the spectrum. That part doesn't work at all. There is a lot going on here, man. There's a lot of flavors. <laughs> it doesn't taste like alcohol at all. It tastes like chocolate-flavored lemonade. Mm. I wouldn't say it tastes like chocolate-flavored lemonade. It definitely tastes like chocolate-flavored pear cider. It is super sweet pear cider. <laughs> I don't like pear cider usually because it is overwhelmingly sugary sweet. Um, and then that weird... It's almost like, so, it's not like chocolate flavored. It's like a manu, it's like if someone were to spray like a chocolate perfume into the air, that's what this tastes like. It's like a, it's like a whiff where you kind of like, I kind of smell like chocolate, but I don't know where that would have come from. It's a weird, it's a weird smell. I don't know why this would smell like chocolate all of a sudden. That's what this tastes like. It's like. There's a chemical flavor of chocolate in the air, uh, but I don't know where it's coming from or why it exists. <laughs> now, this one is terrible. It, it's pretty bad. I don't hate it, though. I, I thought I would hate this a lot more. I, than I hate do. I hate it. I, I'm actually, I'm mm. dead. Mm. The number you have dialed mm. is not connected to a phone. I'm mm. dead. I'm flatlining. This is... This is... <laughs> it always reminds me of um, Malcolm in Jurassic Park where yeah. the scientists were working so hard on figuring out if it could be done they didn't ask if it should be done exactly you know? yes did. I feel like this is one of those situations it's like they, they figured how to do it but they didn't ask should it be done exactly and the answer is no no you should not, <laughs> should you not should, have been done <laughs> you could create this doesn't mean you should create this oh wow but you did create this um <laughs> what are you giving this? Okay, so since I since I didn't immediately spit it out of my mouth, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't give it a zero twenty five. Yeah, I'll give it a zero point five. I'm gonna go higher than you on this one because I can drink this. It's for me. It's not. I mean, we've had some we've had some real dog shit on this show. I still remember those gas station beers from Norway. <laughs> 
thank, thank you, Marcus, for this. The Marcus gave us a horrible. They they were endorsed by Frosty Beard Brewery. I'm, oh, pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure. They I'm pretty sure he was like, this is, "When I'm on the road working in Norway, this is what I stop and to make sure we have plenty of." Um, and it wasn't as bad as the uh, that weird mango. No, I'm sorry, guava lager, non alcohol, low ABV guava lager that we had Ooh. on the show. Yeah, that was pretty. So good. this is like much better than those in the fact that I can drink it. And if I was to drink the whole can, I wouldn't respect myself, but I could drink it. Uh, so I'm going to give this a two. Wow. Yeah. It feels like I don't even know. No, 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 no I, I get it. I get it. Wait, um, good. It's like, not that I want to drink it, but I could drink it. And I and I would, like, every time I take a sip, I'd be like, what is going on here? But yeah, I don't immediately want to spit it out. And we've had some things where I'm just kind of like, you take two sips and you're like, I never want this to ever cross my lips again. Right, uh, and this hasn't gotten to that level of, of horrible yet. No, but but it's but that but, far off. <laughs> but listeners need to know that I don't particularly enjoy sweet uh, cakes or desserts. You just I, like these sweet cakes, baby. Oh, I, I, I love your sweet cakes. Uh, I love savory treats. I am much more of a salty like crisps over yeah. the uh, cake any day of the week. Yeah. Um, I can enjoy sweet imperial stouts and barley wines, but those are always balanced up by something like yeah. uh, bitterness. And uh, So are you just sad that this doesn't have, it says Hooklag Ball. Are you upset that it doesn't have the original name? Uh, no. <laughs> All right. <laughs> In the past, in Sweden, these chocolate balls had a, a name that referred more to old, old school racism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a terrible name. It was a terrible name. <laughs> but there was a really funny sketch that came out about it. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll wrap that up here then. Um, so you can find us online at what's on tap podcast.com, Instagram, Facebook, Spotify, YouTube. And wherever you find podcasts, you can find what's on tap. So until next time, keep drinking and dumb dumbs.